I look around this room and it's just like a, a, this is your life version. And I'm sitting there in England in 1960 saying, where the hell am I going in life? And I picked up a flight magazine, which was the equivalent of an aviation week in England. And I can remember the first paragraph I read in this article. It said, notwithstanding the lonely pelican winging his way down the river, the Cape is a busy place this year. And I thought, wow, you know, they got looking and the Cape in 1960 launched 200 rockets. And now, you know, today if we launch a dozen, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty busy. And back then we launched 200 rockets and of course like that picture that Leroy just gave me you know it was a fantastically interesting and exciting place to work back then <laughs> Cap Milliken is here Bucket took the opportunity to remind me every January that I needed to renew my green card <laughs> and that went on for 20 years no, no kidding until I fi finally became a citizen <laughs> what's that? And he didn't stop then. That's right. Even after I became a citizen, he still said I needed a really red green card. <laughs> you know, I landed in Cocoa Beach. I had one dollar in my pocket. I, I thought I had twenty-one dollars, but I gave a taxi driver a twenty-dollar bill in New York and told him to keep the change because I mixed it up with a one-dollar bill. Because all your bills look alike. In England, the bills are all different colors and different sizes. Over here, they're all the same. So I, I really screwed up right off the bat. And I thought, well, I'll come over here for two years and get some, get some good experience. And then I'll go back and lead Europe into the space business. You can't stay two years working on the Cape in those days and ever want to go back. The, the, you know, the excitement, we had John Glenn's first flight. We had the first Rangers to the moon. We had the first Mariner to Venus. And, uh, and my then English wife said, well, we've got to go back. We've got to go back. So we went back. And McNabb bet me as I left. He said, I bet you five dollars to an English pound that you'll be back. A month later, I sent him the pound. <laughs> and I was standing up there in Stevenage, north of London, in the pouring rain and the cold. The job was crappy. Couldn't find a house. I said, what the hell? All I could think about was Cocoa Beach and, and the blue skies and the, and the rocket program. And, uh, and like they say, you get sand in your shoes and you can't shake it out. And then I came back. And I, I, this is not honoring me, this is me honoring you guys for giving me and this great nation the opportunity to work with you. I am so proud of being part of this program. I gave it my all and, and I meant it and, uh, and I, I thank you dearly. Lunch long enough, thank you again so much. I'm deeply honored by your attendance and by Charlie and the Space Walker fame for the, uh, for the honor. Thank you all.